Well, good morning and Merry Christmas. So good to see you here. Thank you for coming. Last week, our auditorium was decorated with the accoutrements of Christmas, and I made the comment, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Well, today it's going to begin to sound like Christmas. There's a lot of beautiful music to be performed today. Chances are you don't, you're not familiar with those who are sitting around you, so would you please stand up and give everyone a good Christmas greeting? Thank you for greeting others warmly. <laughs> I want to give you an update on Pastor Chuck. Uh, this time last week, uh, he had a medical issue, uh, was taken to the hospital, spent two nights in the hospital, but then came home. The good news is he is well. He's doing fine. Yep. He'll make a, a full recovery and be back with us soon. Uh, he regrets not being here today. Normally he would be getting, giving this opening greeting, and normally he would give the devotional at the end of the program. Well, I'm the pinch hitter today, <laughs> which is a daunting task. I mean, yeah. But do pray for Chuck and Cynthia in these coming days. Let's pray right now. Father, we're always delighted when we come into this sanctuary. This, this is a holy place for us, a sacred spot. Lord, it's where we, we hear your word preached. It's where we sing songs about the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's an opportunity for us to refresh our spirits. And I pray that just that will happen today. I pray that we'll not only hear words, lyrics, and music, but that we will hear you speak to us in uh, very intimate ways. We pray this in your name. Amen. Well, it was last July that the music staff started putting together this program. I, I remember that day it was 100 degrees outside, so we felt a little disjointed talking about Christmas when that hot weather was here. But one of the things we talked about is we wanted our first piece to be a song where the audience could join in in singing with us. So in a moment, I'm going to ask you to stand and sing. Uh, the song is, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. As soon as you hear the melody, you'll know the melody, and the words will be projected up on the screen. You'll join us in verses 1 and 3. The choir will sing verse 2 only, but all those instructions will be up on the screen. Would you please stand?
the past 12 Christmas programs, we have featured a group of singers. We simply call them the Three Sopranos. If you've been here before, you've heard them. It's a marvelous sound. Well, this year, we added two tenors to the group. So we're calling them Beauty and the Beast, all right? <laughs> Now, something unique about these songs that have been sung is that there's no uh, repertoire for this group uh, out, uh, that's already been printed, so every year we have to write a piece. This year's piece was written by Priscilla Murphy. She's our pianist. Priscilla, raise your hand down there. Yep. <laughs> so all, all of these beautiful sounds you're about to hear came from her mind and heart. I think you'll enjoy this.
brightly shining It is the night of the dear Savior's birth Long lay the world in sin and error pining Till he appeared and the soul felt its worth You know, I sing just like that <laughs> in my deepest dreams and wildest imaginations. Yeah, isn't that glorious? Yeah, talent well used. You know, Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without the singing of Christmas carols. So uh, would you please stand once again and join us in singing three carols of the Christmas season?
Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day To save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy Oh, tidings of comfort and joy Thank you. 
milk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you will soon deliver you. Mary, did you did know? Did you know? Did you know? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know your baby boy would calm the storm with his hand. Did you know that your baby boy has walked with angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God.
<laughs> I've been thinking a lot lately about an interesting and important topic, and I invite you in the next few minutes to think with me about this. The topic is this, the perfect timing of our God. Once again, the perfect timing of our God. In life, proper timing is very important. Good timing has been defined as doing the right thing at the right time. It's possible to do the right thing at the wrong time, and that almost negates the right thing. So right thing at the wrong time. We've all had experiences of doing that wrong, right? Doing the right thing in the wrong time. Uh, a memory that comes back to mind, <laughs> a rather painful one. When I was in high school, uh, there were four friends and me that, that, that we just spent every weekend together. So one weekend we go out to one of their parents' lake houses. So the five of us are in the backyard and we build this uh, substantially large bonfire. And about the time that it was going pretty well, you know, we got the coat hangers out, straightened them out, and put the marshmallows on. But then uh, some emergency vehicles started driving by, including a fire truck. So we, we, we immediately ran, followed the fire truck, and sad to say that there was a house of fire, and uh, it was consumed with fire. The owner of the house, husband and wife, were out in front of the house, and they were sobbing, and they were comforting one another. I'll never forget, the husband looked over and saw the five of us there, and his sad face turned into an angry face, and uh, uh, almost a look of disgust. And I thought to myself, what have we done? Why is he offended at our presence? And then I realized that in our haste, we were still holding the coat hanger with marshmallows at the top, you know? <laughs> That's how you make s'mores, you know, you, you take that to a, a burning fire. <laughs> you can laugh about it now, but at the point it, it, it wasn't very funny. Yeah, that's an example uh, of just the right thing, making s'mores, but at the wrong time. <laughs> it made it wrong. Let's think for a moment about God's timing. As expected, God has an impeccable sense of timing. It's because of who he is. His timing is always perfect. He always does the right thing at the right time. God is never early. He's never late. He's never in a hurry. He's always on time. The perfect timing of God is clearly seen in the incarnation. That's what we've been singing about all evening. And also in the life of Jesus. The Apostle Paul kind of teases this up for us when he writes in the book of Galatians these words. In the fullness of time, God sent Jesus into the world to redeem mankind. I love that phrase, in the fullness of time. It's a poetic phrase. I think in our uh, prosaic nomenclature, we would say it, uh, just at the right time, God sent Jesus into the world. It was not an arbitrary act. In my mind, uh, in my imagination, I, I can imagine God turning to his son and saying, now. <laughs> I've always wondered why Christ didn't come a thousand years earlier than he did or a thousand years later. Uh, I, in my mind, I can see advantages of, of either of those. But that wouldn't have been the right time. God's timing is always perfect. We also see how this timing works by considering the life and ministry of Jesus. I've always wondered why, for the first 30 years of Jesus' life, he lived in anonymity and obscurity. You do know that, that just a handful of people knew he was the Son of God. Even his brothers and sisters didn't know. So I've often wondered, it happened when he was 30. Uh, couldn't it have happened when he was 29 or 28 or 27? It's a question we don't need to answer because at the right time, God metaphorically tapped Jesus on the shoulder and said, now it's time. And he started his earthly ministry. Gathered together 12 disciples. 
ministry started by teaching all the way through his life as we read in the gospels we hear periodically Jesus say in this phrase my time has not yet come see that tells us that he is listening to the father's voice he's following his cues for instance there was a time when the disciples came to Jesus and they said, uh, Jesus, we're going to go to a festival tomorrow. Do you want to join us? And he said, you go and have a good time, but I'm not going to go because my time has not come. The hour has not come. You hear that sensitivity on something as seemingly innocuous as let's go to a festival. He said, no, I, I can't do that right now. Always sensitive to what the Father had to say. About three and a half days before his crucifixion, we read these words about the story. As the time approached for Jesus to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. He got the green light. In some way, the Father communicated to him, now is the time. And, and he, he turned and he, he was set on what he had to do those next three days. So we see the perfect timing of God throughout the life and ministry of Jesus. For 30, 33 years, he was following a divine schedule. He was attentive to his heavenly father's leadership and obeyed. Therefore, Jesus always did the right thing, the right time. He was never early. He was never late. He never got in a hurry. And he was always on time. Now, here's the pivot point of my thoughts to you. If Jesus submitted to the perfect timing of God for his life, shouldn't we? The best decision that you and I will ever make in life is to give our lives wholeheartedly to God and to be a follower of Jesus. There are many benefits to surrendering our lives to Christ. He gives us peace, forgiveness, purpose, community, eternal life. Plus, when we give our lives to Christ, he promises to lead us, to give us direction, to open doors and close doors. He gives us a blueprint to pursue, a strategy. And you see, we too can experience the perfect timing of God. Everyone in this room is in one of two positions. Uh, there are some who have never made that decision. You've never come to the place where, as an act of your will, you surrender your life to God. There's no better time to do that than tonight. There are others in the room who have made that initial commitment. But let's be honest. As we go through life, there are times when we really question his timing. Do we not? Sometimes we feel like he's being inattentive, inattentive to us. Sometimes we, we think he has forgotten us. Sometimes we think he's messed up on the schedule. Uh, why did you close that door again, God? Uh, we all struggle with that. Nevertheless, it is our responsibility to commit ourselves to his plan for our lives. Walk by faith. Wait on the Lord. And obey him when he directs. On that subject of waiting... It's been said that the most difficult thing in the Christian life, second only to suffering, is waiting. It's hard, isn't it? We don't like to wait. But we can, re we can rest when we wait if our focus is on the Lord. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to bow your head and there'll be a minute or two of silence. Please take that time to... To, to wrestle with some of the thoughts I've presented to you. you know, have you ever committed your life to Christ? It's a very simple thing. You don't have to say anything out loud because he knows your thoughts and he knows your hearts. 
And if you've walked with him for years, uh, but you're beginning to struggle with two or three issues uh, in your life that have never transpired or didn't work out the way you, th- you thought it would, well, why don't you talk about that to the Lord? He understands. Please bow your head and think on these things. Father, the best way we know how, we commit our lives to you. It's the right thing for us to do, and you will receive us wholeheartedly. Lord, we trust you throughout life to lead us and to do what is good for us. We love you. We place our faith in you. We pray this in the good and strong name of Jesus. Amen. (laughs) Our final song today is a brilliant one, so sit up straight. You're going to enjoy this. It's called Joy to the World. Choir and orchestra.